Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Now in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you could possibly destroy your brushless motor before even powering it up. What we'll do is I'll first go through exactly how this is possible and then I'll show you a bunch of examples that I have here on the bench with me. So let's go ahead, grab one of these motors and a motor mount. This is what is important and critical to actually destroying one of these motors. Now, typically what you have is you have a bunch of fasteners and these fasteners are not necessarily supplied with the brushless motor that you're gonna go ahead and install. And this is the component that is very critical. The fasteners that you select are important in order to make sure you can manage the length that you need for your installation. The first thing that you typically do is you go ahead, grab your motor, and then you're gonna marry it up to the mount of your specific application. In this case, this would be an airplane mount. This is a, a mount that I designed and laser cut out of aluminum. Uh, you might be dealing with a very similar component at the front of your airplane. So in this case, you take that, you're gonna line it up with all the holes, you're gonna take all of your fasteners and you're gonna drop the fastener into the hole in the mount, securing the motor as you go ahead and tighten and fasten that up. Now, the important part is if you go and select a fastener that is too long, you're actually gonna go through the motor mount, enter the motor and continue to drive that fastener into a point where you can cause damage. Now, if your fastener is too long, you can cause damage by going and fastening into the motor windings located immediately behind the front face of this brushless motor. Now, what happens is you may ask, well, how does that destroy it? It just goes and butts up against the windings and maybe pushes them out of the way. They're just electrical wires. They can move out of the way. Well, that's not the part that destroys it. The windings have an enamel coating that resides right on the outside of the wire. If you go ahead, drive that fastener in and remove the coating on two of the wires that are adjacent to each other, you now have the ability to cause a short between those two wires. That's exactly what you want to avoid. Now, I have four examples in front of me here to show you exactly what kind of scenarios you can find yourself in. Motor manufacturers in recent years have gone a long way in order to help us avoid this scenario. Just for that reason alone, I feel like it's necessary to shed some light again on this topic that we used to deal with much more significantly about a decade ago. This is just in case you happen to run into this situation with your brushless motor or anything else that requires a fastener that if its length is too long can get you into trouble. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the examples that I have. So the first example, the one that you saw just recently, is of a brushless outrunner. This is where the outside of the case is rotating and spinning. In this case, what you'll find is that you have the greatest amount of distance from the fixed component of the outrunner to where the windings are located. A fastener has to be significantly longer in order to cause damage to this specific type of motor. Now on the other side, this is typically where the brushless motor manufacturer will end up giving and providing a specific adapter to attach this, providing also the fasteners that come with that adapter. You can have that fastened in here and because it has been provided, it should never be too long in order to cause damage. But just be aware, on a brushless outrunner, you can fasten into both sides of the motor and you need to be aware of the length of the fastener for both cases. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the second motor example consists of. On this specific motor, the motor manufacturer has gone ahead and provided us with an extra bit of safety. In fact, what it is, is a barrier between the fastener that you're gonna drive into this motor and the copper windings that can be found on the inside of this motor. If you look very carefully, you can find that plate that resides right in front of the copper windings. There is a gap between that barrier plate and the front plate of the brushless motor, and that's gonna allow us to have some extra room there where we can drive the fastener in and this motor is gonna be safe from damage as long as you don't overdo it and really crush through this barrier piece. That is the second example that we have. Now let's take a look at the third example that we have here. On this particular brushless motor, no matter which way you look at it, you cannot see inside the motor what is going on. It is this that could be a little bit scary for you because you don't know where the the mount actually ends and where you're going to be driving that fastener in. 
So I tried to look through it with a flashlight. However, on video, I cannot capture what I see when using a flashlight. One of the things you can do is use a flashlight to see exactly what's going on behind here. And the other option, of course, is to simply just take it apart. Now, on this particular motor, I ended up uh, unfastening three of the fasteners located on this front plate and then simply the front cap ends up coming off just by sliding off and you have the bearing in the cap in one hand and then you have the rest of the motor in the other. So immediately you can see that the copper windings are again blocked by this barrier material that will not allow you to directly come in contact with the windings itself. You're going to have to first drive that fastener through this barrier before you can reach those windings. Now let's take a look at the fourth and final brushless motor that we have here as an example. This particular motor does not have any sort of barrier between the copper windings and that front face. This type of motor is the motor that I'm talking about where you can go ahead, drive that fastener right through the front plate and into the copper windings, ultimately destroying it and making it become a complete paperweight for you. That's what we want to avoid. Now there are a couple ways that you can avoid running into this type of situation. The first thing that you can do is you can go ahead, just like we did in this particular example, remove that front plate so that you can see exactly how thick this front plate material is. The fastener length that you want is gonna be based off of the mount that you have to go through, added with the thickness of this plate. Now the general rule of fasteners is you always want two to three threads sticking out of the material that you're fastening into. This is to make sure that you have a very good safe fastening of the two different materials. Now what you'll also want to make sure if you are following that rule is that you do have the room behind it. You can see that we got lots of room in this particular motor before we end up running into issues with that barrier. Two to three threads is not going to be a problem for us at all. In fact, what you can do once you have it to this point is you can take your fastener and you can line it up beside it and make sure that two to three threads is not going to be a problem. In this case, it's not even close. Now there is another way that we'd be able to approach this as well. What we can do is grab the motor that we're interested in driving a fastener into in order to mount up to our radio controlled application. You also wanna grab your calipers again, and this time you're gonna end up using the end of the calipers because you wanna find the depth that this will end up going in. I'm just simply not comfortable with this coming in contact with copper wires. Now, if you do have a barrier such as this motor here, you can go and line it up so that it hits that barrier and you know exactly how much depth you have. So I go ahead, I run it in, and then I'm gonna push slightly in order to push this right flat. I know that we have seven millimeters from the front face of this motor all the way to the barrier. As long as I come somewhere at a maximum of six millimeters in, I'm going to be okay and free from and damaging any of those. In order to figure out the fastener size that we need, don't forget to include the thickness of the mount ding bracket that you're going to end up fastening into. There you have it folks, I hope that gives you an idea as to what many people were struggling with and dealing with and I've seen so many different motors end up getting fired up for the first time only to you know, provide the owner with that realization that something is wrong. I hope you enjoyed the video, like the video if you do and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Now, I just wanted to point out here that this video was actually inspired by me changing out the caliper in my car. I ended up changing out the caliper. It had to be replaced. I think for like the third time, the caliper that I get seems to be seizing up in every way imaginable. Either way, I had to go and replace that caliper and it comes with its own bunch of fasteners. Now those fasteners were different length than stock. I didn't know that at the time. I thought and assumed that it was the exact same size. Those fasteners also came with their own sets of washers. I used the fastener with the washers that came included in the caliper set. I drove that into the bracket mount on my car. I installed a new rotor, installed the new pads, had everything assembled. I mounted the tire. I jumped in the car for my test run. And as soon as I started to let out the clutch, I ended up realizing I had a big issue in my hands. Now what ended up happening is the fastener was too long and ended up going right into the back of the rotor of my brake disc. Because of that, there was a lot of noise. 
there was a lot of friction and I didn't go anywhere. I came to a grinding halt, literally, and from there on in, I had to go and identify what the problem was. Well, it didn't take me too long to take the tire off and realize that I have a bolt going into my rotor and I've now made one complete revolution on that rotor and dug out myself a very nice groove. Uh, with that being said, if I don't help you out with a brushless motor and identifying the correct length of fasteners and just being aware that this can cause damage, I hope that I would be able to help prevent a situation like I found myself in with the disc on my car while changing a caliper. Again, thanks a lot for watching guys. See you next time.